Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to share with you this article, 10 Simple Rules for Effective Statistical Practice. So this is in computational biology. I will link up the article. It is uh, open source, so you will be able to have a read of it yourself. And I wanted to go through these 10 rules and I guess give a little bit of my own commentary and experience on each of them. So we can see here some couple of pretty heavy hitters in the field of statistics. Computational biology was maybe a little bit of an unusual place for it to be published, but nonetheless, it's open access. And I think it has some really, really good rules in here. So there's a little bit of a preamble, uh, but we'll jump straight into rule one. Statistical methods should enable data to answer scientific questions. So they are coming at this from a uh, science point of view, but we can expand that if we're working in, say, business, then it is going to be the same. We want to answer business questions. Uh, if you're in academia, you want to answer your research questions. So having a purpose to your analysis, taking our data and using our data to answer questions is going to be important. I would actually add to this, and particularly where there is going to be public consumption, uh, so not just some niche uh, experts looking at your analysis, I would also add that there should be a good story as well, as well as just getting the answer in terms of statistics. I think that we want to have a story or a narrative that we can thread through and make it more accessible to more people. Okay, rule number two, signals always come with noise. So this is one of the key parts of statistics. Uh, and if you have had formal statistical training, this really gets drilled into you in terms of variability and variation. And when you're modeling things, they, they normally don't work out perfectly. Sometimes I have noticed the people that are coming in from a discipline uh, and particularly also computer scientists, people that have come in from more of a coding seem to treat statistical methods as magical solution, particularly when it comes to prediction. Uh, and that's almost never the case. So whenever we're looking at prediction and when people are promising you with, say, uh, AI or machine learning methods, this is going to predict the thing that you want to predict. Uh, it's very common for it to have false positives and false negatives, and they often don't think about that. On to rule three. This one is really, really important, particularly if you're a researcher, perhaps you're doing a master's or a PhD, uh, or maybe a slightly more experienced researcher, and that's to plan ahead. Other contexts, it's important as well. But what I like to recommend and what I always recommended with my students was you could almost write some of your results section in advance of collecting your data. And the things that you would have to leave gaps for are whether their things are significant, whether they are larger than, less than, the actual values that we are looking at. But in terms of the things that we want to find out and the things that we want to say, if we map that out in advance, then it's more likely we will make sure we collect the data to be able to do that. There's nothing worse than uh, as a consultant or when I was a supervisor, having a student come to me and say, well, how do I answer my question? We'll look at the data and the data just doesn't have the variables or the information in order to answer the questions that they are trying to answer. Uh, I've actually had that come up a number of times in the commercial settings as well where clients have come to me, they've perhaps in some cases spent a lot of money collecting data and they've maybe left out one or two key variables and they just won't be able to find out the things they want to find out. So plan ahead. Uh, this is also really helpful if you're in a human research, then doing ethics applications really helps with this. Uh, they tend to want you to map things out a long way in advance. Okay, rule four. Rule four is a big one. So they have this uh, here, garbage in, garbage out. So no matter how good your analysis is, if your data is nonsense, then you are going to get nonsense results. Uh, and I have seen this many, many, many times. So the 
process of collecting the data or sourcing the data, depending on what the data is, is going to be vital. There's going to be aspects of data cleaning as well to make sure that we don't have kind of weird outliers or anomalies or measurement errors or things sitting in there. But even even before thinking about the data cleaning, how are we getting the data? How is it being collected? How are things being measured? Uh, we want to do as good of a job as possible on this because otherwise everything we do afterwards is just going to be not of any value. Okay, this is another big one uh, which I would say is a critique of people who call them data, normally it's people that call themselves data scientists but have come from maybe a coding background, uh, sometimes from say business analytics or something like that but really more often than not it's people that have come from a coding background and they treat statistics as just another set of functions. So if I want to do this particular operation, I throw in this library or this package or this function and it does it for me. And they don't really understand the maths or the underpinning of what they're doing. And therefore, quite often, they will end up with results that are just not quite right. There's something a little bit wonky about them uh, because they haven't really had a good understanding of what they are trying to do. So really important that statistics not just a set of functions, uh, or as they say here, computations. Uh, there's actually some underlying maths to and, and assumptions around a lot of models that we need to make sure are correct. And there's particular ways of being able to interpret the, da the uh, data and the output that we get from our statistical methods as well. So that's also going to be really important. Number six, keep it simple. Yes, absolutely. This is a, probably a different group of people from some of these other rules, but I've definitely encountered people that really want to do the fanciest thing possible. And that's nice that they are trying to expand their horizons and do clever things. But if we are trying to solve a particular problem or answer a particular question, we should start with simple and then get more complex if we need to. And sometimes it can be as simple as if we are just trying to demonstrate a relationship, maybe it's just a scatter plot. Maybe there's a bar graph. Maybe there's some confidence intervals. Maybe there is going to be some modeling. Maybe there'll be linear models. Maybe there'll be mixed models. Maybe they will start to get a little bit fancy uh, in order to account for things like sampling, uh, missing values, study design. But we always want to start with the simplest methods possible uh, and go more complex from there if we need to. Okay, number seven, provide assessments of variability. Uh, so this is one that comes up sometimes um, and I guess it comes up in different ways. So, so kind of what they are talking about here is um, people not really either not accounting for or not quoting things like standard errors and so whenever we are quoting or talking about parameters, we're talking about measurements, we're talking about relationships, uh, one thing we want to do is talk about statistical significance, but it's also really important to talk about uh, things like our measurement error, our variability, uh, it could be confidence intervals around our estimates, how sure are we uh, in terms of these things that we are presenting. So a really important point here that we don't just quote single numbers uh, whenever we can have intervals and account for that variability. Checking the assumptions, definitely really important. I mentioned earlier, people that treat statistical methods just as a set of com computational functions, they often will not check their assumptions. Whenever I'm reviewing any work uh, or reviewing research for papers, uh, for journals, I will be looking to see whether they have checked their assumptions. They don't necessarily need to show me uh, explicitly every single component, but I do get somewhat suspicious where there is no mention of it whatsoever. Either it's someone that hasn't realized or hasn't thought or hasn't checked their assumptions, or there can also be times where someone has checked and then maybe they just don't want to tell you because maybe it's not quite as uh, good and flattering as they would have liked. Okay, number nine. When possible, replicate. So replication, definitely very important, particularly where we are talking about science. 
Uh, it can be hard. We can't always replicate things ourselves. But I guess attached to that is if we're not replicating ourselves, making things nice and explicit if we're publishing research in journals or publicly so that others can replicate. Perhaps if we're in a business context, then we might look at different ways that we can approach a problem, see whether we can replicate results from different components of the data, maybe splitting it up uh, or doing different kinds of experiments just to ensure what we're doing is actually, we didn't just by chance end up with the result, there's actually something genuine there. Okay, rule number 10, and it relates to what I was just saying, make your analysis reproducible. So if you are publishing in journals, more, uh, more and more often now they want to see your code. Uh, some will want to see your data. They can get a little bit awkward in terms of ethics. So it can be a little bit of a tug of war around data privacy versus the making things public and re reproducible. Uh, but being very explicit, here's my code, here's my methods. So not just saying I did a regression, but here is actually the code that I used is going to show others how you went about things. If it's public data, they can take that data. They can check that they get the same results. Even if it is not necessarily public information, just makes things much more clearer, much more credible as well. If you're doing a piece of analysis uh, and if someone is doing analysis for me or something that I do quite often is I will be asked to either moderate or check analysis that's been done for pieces of research. And if I don't see the code, uh, I start to get a little bit suspicious that what people are saying is their results is maybe not necessarily what they did. So it's a way of making sure that you're very transparent with what you have done. Okay, so this has been 10 simple rules for effective statistical practice. And I think that they are all pretty important. They're things that hopefully you've already considered, uh, but certainly in terms of your own statistical practice, data science or analysis, things that you should be thinking about whenever you're doing any kind of work. Thanks for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love it for you to hit that subscribe. Uh, I am back here regularly with videos about statistics, research, R and data.